Okay guys, so let's open up our TA portal now. It takes a little bit of time to come in. Beautiful. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a base PLC program. So we did all those configurations. Um, let's do that one more time and then we'll save it as our base PLC program. And then we can bring that up anytime we need to do any other programming. That way all the configuration is done and we know that it's able to speak to our PLC. So we're going to create a new project. Okay, we're going to call this guy base PLC program. Takes a little bit of time to come in. There we go. Okay, next step is we're going to configure a device. Okay, there's nothing there, so we're going to add a new device. We're going to controllers, Somatic S7-1200, CPU. Now I know that I have a 1212 ACDC relay, which is right here but there are three different models of that guy. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna come down here to unspecified CPU, open this up, and I'm going to choose this guy right here for an unspecified CPU. Then I'm gonna hit add, and you'll notice here on the left-hand side it says open device view. So hit add. Now this again takes a little bit of time because it's gonna add in that unspecified CPU and then we'll, we'll see the device view, but the device uh, in front of us will be like this. It'll just be a generic PLC. So we'll have to do one more step in order to tie into our 1212C. Okay, at this point here, we can see that generic PLC. We can go to two places. We can either go to here, to accessible devices, or we can go here to detect the configuration of the connected device. So let's try this. Excellent, okay, so I'm using uh, this interface, pn slash ie. What are the options here? That or teleservice, so we're doing this guy. I'm using my ethernet adapter. I simply have uh, an ethernet patch cable going from my computer over to my PLC. I'm not making use of a modem at this point. Okay, so once that guy's there, we're going to start a search and we're going to tone out and see if anything's connected into the computer. Beautiful, so it found my PLC at 192.168.0.10. So that's the last IP address that I gave my PLC. Looks good. Okay, scan and information retrieval is completed. Uh, so we're going to select that actual PLC and then hit detect. Uh, before we move on though, we can double check that this is actually our PLC by hitting this tab right here for flash LED. And you can see that these LEDs right here, I'll do a picture in picture right now, these LEDs are, are chirping at us so we can see that we're actually talking to that PLC. Let's get rid of this and we're going to hit detect. And we should find that the, the image there comes in and matches exactly with the PLC that's in front of us right now. Nice, there we go. Okay, let's zoom in here. Let's drop this down a touch. Let's zoom in. There we go. Okay, and there we can see that this basically matches with the PLC that's in front of us. Uh, we have uh, zero through seven for our inputs here. So we have eight inputs. And then the back, back end here, we have six outputs. So there's Q0.0 .0 all the way through to 0 0.5. Nice. Uh, let's double click this guy and double check our IP address. There we go. So 192.168.0.10. And I'm using subject mask of 255.255.255.0. Okay, you'll notice that um, if I scroll down here, I'm not using a router at this point. I just have my ethernet cable going from the computer to the PLC. We'll use a router later on when we're making use of the HMI. Okay, so now let's create uh, a simple pro program here. So we'll drop this guy down. We'll go to our main program block here. So I'm over here on the left hand side. I'm going to my main OB1. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to open this guy up. 
And we're going to do an AND and an OR circuit. Okay, so let's start off with the AND circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab two of these guys. I call them XIC. Seaman calls them the normally open contact. So we're going to grab one of these guys and drop it down onto our rung. You can see that this is green here, so I'm able to drop it in there. Beautiful. I'm going to grab another XIC or another normally open. Drop that guy on right beside. And you can see that these guys are in series. So I'm creating an AND circuit where this and this have to be true in order to turn on my output. I'm going to grab my output again, wait till it's green, and drop it down. And that's essentially what we need for our AND circuit. Okay, down here what I can do is I can, uh, I can put another rung in, but I think what we'll do is we'll start with this rung first and then we'll change it out to look at the OR circuit. So let's, uh, let's label this guy. We're going to say this is percent Q0.0. .0. Okay, that corresponds to my first output. Remember the outputs are starting at, at 0. I'm going to rename that guy. So I'm going to rename that guy as output zero. Okay, excellent. Um, now here for uh, my inputs, um, let me just bring up a picture in picture here. So I purchased the, the starter kit um, and it comes with these little dip switches here. Um, let me see if I can zoom in here just a touch and then zoom back. So you'll notice, or you may be able just to make out that these are fine and these are all broken. So I had these in my bag. Um, if you purchase a starter kit, put this guy in, uh, in some bubble wrap or something or in, in a protective case, um, or don't just jam it into your bag like I did. I sheared off all four of these input terminals here, um, which really sucks. So I'm gonna have to make use of, let's see, this is zero, one, two, three. I'm gonna start at input number four. So I'm gonna be using this terminal right here as my first input. Um, you can use zero if you want, because yours is probably not broken. Okay, but I'm starting with uh, input four, and I'll use input four and five for this AND circuit. So if you're wondering why I'm randomly choosing four and five, <clears throat> it's because I broke the other ones. Okay, so let's start off this guy. So we're gonna put percent uh, input 0.4. Okay, and then over here, I'm going to tag this guy as uh, percent input 0 0.5. There we go. And let's relabel, relabel those guys. So we'll rename this guy as uh, switch A. Beauty. And we'll rename this guy as switch B. Sweet. Okay, so everything's set. Now, um, I tried this before and I forgot to compile this program. So we're going to come up here next. So now that we put in a base program here, we're going to come up here to compile. That's going to check that everything's cool according to what we've placed into the program. There's no errors or anything. Okay, looks good. Blocks was successfully compiled. Compiling finished. Error zero. Warnings zero. That's a good start. Now, before we download this, I want you guys to do one more thing. So we're gonna go back to uh, this view right here. Come on, there we go. Okay, so, and a couple things to note here. You can see that uh, there's my input four, and you can see that it's been labeled switch A. There's my input number five, it's been labeled as switch B. And down here, there's my output zero and it's labeled as output zero okay what i want you to do is i want you to right click on this guy and then i want you to scroll down to download to device and i want you to download um, the hardware configuration because i just tried this and i downloaded it to my plc i change i physically changed the inputs and i could see the leds changing on the on the actual plc but when I went into the monitoring mode, it was not changing on my PLC program. So go here to hardware configuration, click on this guy. And we'll download the hardware configuration to the PLC. And then at that point, once we start toggling the, the, toggling the dip switches, um, we should see it on the LEDs of our PLC and we'll see it on our program as well.
Okay, everything seems to be all right. There's uh, an exclamation mark here. It says protection from unauthorized access. Devices connected to an enterprise network or directly to the internet must be appropriately protected against unauthorized access. So, um, my <clears throat> I'm connected through uh, Wi-Fi right now. So it could be just that uh, somehow my PLC is seeing the internet. Um, I'm going to negate this. Modules are stopped for downloading to the device. Looks good. Delete and replace system data on the target. Looks good. So we're going to hit load. Beautiful. We're going to hit finish. Looks good. So at that point, uh, here we can see loading complete, error zero, warning zero. So at that point, the hardware configuration should be there. And we should be able to talk back and forth now. We should be able to see it on our PLC program. Let's go back to main OB1. Okay, uh, we've already compiled it. We're now going to download. So there's the compile button. There's my download button. Okay, looks good. We'll hit load. Okay, it looks good, loading complete, error zero, warning zero. And in order to have this go live and see what's going on out in the field, then we're going to click this guy right here. So this is the monitoring mode, so we're gonna click this on. And we're looking for all greens along here, and this should go green as well. Slowly coming in, beautiful, okay? These are all green, this is green as well. Um, and, but again, if you didn't do that hardware configuration, you would see this, but when you actually physically change the, the inputs on the PLC, you wouldn't see these change. Okay, so um, I'm now going to toggle these dip switches up here. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom into my LEDs here, but I'll be toggling these guys right here. Okay, so let's zoom in here. There we go. I want you to keep your eye on uh, inputs four and five. Uh, negate these guys. So these are garbage, right? Because I broke those off. So it looks like one, two, and three are set in the on position. Uh, but we're gonna look, look at input four and input five on our LEDs. We're gonna look at this LED right here for our output zero. And those are gonna correspond to these guys right here. So I'm now gonna switch input number four and you should see this guy goes green. Oh, that's nice. Excellent. In addition to that, you can see that uh, this LED just fired on right here for input number four. And this is an AND circuit, right? So this has to be one, and this has to be one for this guy to be one. So this guy's a zero right now because I haven't switched input B on, on input five. I'm now gonna do that right now. You'll see this go green and instantaneously the output will turn on. So you will also see that this LED turns on and instantaneously the output zero LED turns on as well. In three, two, one. Oh, that's nice. Excellent, okay, so this guy and this guy are on, turning on our output. You may have heard that little quick click let me stop talking and you'll hear it here. Okay, so that's the relay output. It's clicking on there um, and turning on the output there. Beautiful, so uh, this is an AND circuit. So if I turn off my first output, sorry, my first input, then my output should turn off because I don't have logic continuity. Switching it back on, I regain logic continuity. If I switch off my second input switch, and I lose the logic continuity and my output turns off. So both of those switches have to be on in order for my output to turn on. And we got a beautiful AND circuit there. Nice. Okay, so let's switch this guy out to an OR circuit. So we're gonna go offline here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna switch up our, uh, our circuit here. So let's drop this guy down so we can have a little bit more room, okay. Let's put in a parallel rung here. So we're gonna put an open branch here. Okay, we're gonna put an XIC, or what they call a normally open here. I'm gonna grab, what I'm doing here is I'm left clicking here, bring it up till I see green and let go. And now I've got uh, a parallel circuit here. Okay, I'm now going to delete this guy out. Okay. 
and I'm going to click on this guy. Now I can write in input 0 0.5 or I can click here now. So I can click here, go down to input 0 0.5, and left click on the outside of it, uh, beautiful, and it comes in. So now we've got an OR circuit. So this or this have to be on in order for my output to be on. We've already established communication with the PLC. So the next thing would be to quickly compile it. Beautiful, no warnings. Very nice. And now we're going to download to the PLC. We're going to overwrite the program that's there. Looking for all greens here. Oh, not all greens, because like a donkey, I haven't put it into monitoring mode. Let's put it into monitoring mode now. So we've downloaded, but we're not online yet. Now we're going online. Uh, both my switches are on, so let me turn those guys off for now. Beautiful. Okay, so we have logic continuity up to switch A, logic continuity up to switch B. I'm now going to switch on my input number four, and you'll see that corresponding uh, LED turn on. Beautiful. And my output turns on. Turn that guy off. It's an OR circuit, so switch B should also turn on the output. Beautiful. So you can see the, out, the LED for input number five turned on, and instantaneously the output LED turned on as well. Sweet. Right on. So now we've been able to create uh, an AND circuit and an OR circuit. We went through the configuration of our PLC, and now we've downloaded that to our PLC now. So let's save this now. So let's go offline. Okay, we've been saving this as our, our base program all the way through. So let's save this one more time. There we go. If we wanted to, we could uh, quickly eliminate these guys. Okay, we could go to our PLC tags. Okay, and we can just uh, quickly just cut these guys out. Let's see if we can cut all these guys out. So we can delete this guy, delete this guy, and delete this guy. Why are we doing that? Because we need a base program that we can use um, time and time again every time that we sit down and start programming our PLC. So. Now if we go back to our main OB1, there's nothing there except for the network. Our tags are now clean, so we don't have any names here corresponding to our inputs or our outputs. If we go here to our PLC, everything's set up now, so all those names disappeared. The IP configuration for our Profinet interface is set with our appropriate IP. And now we can save this bad boy. And now we got a nice base PLC program that we can work with uh, from here on in. All right, guys, that's good enough for, uh, for this video. Keep going on the playlist here. Uh, but we've done pretty well. We've been able to go through the configuration. We were able to download the hardware configuration. Then we downloaded our, our actual PLC program. We we're able to do an AND circuit and an OR circuit. Uh, and we'll just consistently get a little bit more complicated and we'll introduce uh, more and more instructions as we go. But now we've made sure that we can actually talk to the PLC every time that we sit down and start a new video. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll see you in the next one.